Lane M7, apply occlusive dressing, and perform a needle chest decompression. Task, treat a chest wound in tension pneumothorax. Condition, you are a member of a team on a combat patrol and has come under small arms fire in a non-seaburn environment. You witness a teammate in the open receive a gunshot wound to the upper body. Your teammate was unable to move you and, and is responsive. You are behind cover, not under hostile fire, and security has been established. You must begin treatment while waiting on the medical personnel to arrive. The casualty is alert and complaining of difficulty breathing. Another soldier is helping you finish the casualty assessment and is obtaining the other vital signs. Standard. Perform all tasks as standard in sequence within 10 minutes without causing further injury to the casualty. Step 1. Apply occlusive dressing. Expose and assess the injury. Remove enough clothing to access the injury. Place hand over the open chest wound and create a temporary seal. Apply occlusive dressing from the casualty's eye pack over the wound. First wound is the first wound treated. Ensure materials extend two inches beyond the end of the wound. If improvised seals used, tape four sides on the exhale. Step one, wipe dirt and fluid from the skin with the gauze. Place the dressing wound bent directly over the wound opening. Upon full expiration with adhesive side down, ensuring not to touch the adhesive side of the dressing. Firmly press the dressing on the skin and ensure a good seal. Note, if using a hyphen vest, a vented chest seal, do not tape to secure. Vents must remain open. If using boiling or other vented commercial chest seal, tape all sides of chest seal with two to three inches of tape. Log roll the casualty or have the conscious casualty sit up and examine the back for an exit wound. Apply an occlusive dressing to the exit wound using the same standards as per step Charlie. Next, you will verify the presence of tension pneumothorax by checking for at least three of the four indications below, verbalized as needed. Step one, question the casualty about difficulty in breathing, pain on the affected side, or coughing up blood, and observe the signs of progressive respiratory distress. Difficulty breathing, pain on the affected side, or coughing up blood. The greater state, casualty is gasping for air and has pain on the movement side. Next thing you'll verbalize is observe the casualty's bare chest for respiratory rate, death, and abdomen for progressive distension. Observing the casualty's bare chest for respiratory rate, depth, and abdominal distension. Greater will state casualty has poor respiratory rate and depth. Abdomen is mildly distended. Look and feel the patient's chest for signs of air in the chest wall. Looking and feeling casualty's chest for air in the chest wall. Greater will state you feel a crackling sensation on the casualty's chest. Fourth one, you will observe the chest for failure of one of the both sides of the chest and expand, well, make sure it's expanding normally upon inhalation. Looking for equal rise and fall of the chest. Greater will state you observe one side is failing to rise with the other. The last one, look for bluish skin. Looking for bluish skin. Greater will state you observe mild cyanosis. After you identify these three indicators, identification that you need to perform a needle decompression in the site. The primary site is the fifth intercostal space on the lateral chest wall and the anterior axillary line on the same side as the injury. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth intercostal rib space. Now once you've located the site, you'll clean the affected area making circular motions outward. Next step, you'll insert needle into the chest at a 90 degree angle to the chest wall. Remove the plastic from the cap in a three and a quarter inch, 10 or 14 gauge needle and remove the cover of the needle's flash chamber. Insert the needle into the skin over the superior border of the lower rib at the site and direct the needle into the ICS at a 90 degree angle. As the needle enters the space, a pop is felt followed by possible hiss of air. Ensure the needle is advanced all the way to the hub and left in place for five to 10 seconds. I hear a pop, wait five seconds. 
five seconds has elapsed. Remove the needle, leaving the catheter in place. For this step, the candidate is going to stabilize the catheter hub to the chest wall using an adhesive tape. The candidate will then make sure the catheter is working. He's going to check for air coming out of the catheter. Checking the catheter. After this, he's going to measure pulse and the O2 sac. The candidate can perform this step on themselves or another soldier since the casualty must be a mannequin or a grader may prep the device screen with uh, designated vitals. The candidate will first wipe the index finger, middle finger, or ring fingertip with an alcohol wipe to ensure that it's clean and dry. Then they'll apply the sen sensor and document the readings on the DD form 1380. After this, he will remove the DD form 1380 from the casualty's IFAC and report all treatments. The administrative data will be filled out on the front of the card. He will mark an X on the casualty's evacuation as priority presidents. He will mark them as urgent, priority, or routine. Urgent. Next, he'll put the date, write the date of inquiry in the day, month, year format. For example, 29 June. 2013. Time, he'll put a 24 hour time of the injury, indicating whether local or Zulu time, such as 13 Zulu. Then he'll annotate the mechanism of injury by marking an X on the mechanism or cause of injury. For this instance, it's a gunshot wound. Next, he'll, on the injury, he'll mark an X at the site of injury on the body picture. For burn injury, circle the burn percentages on the figure. If multiple mechanisms of injury and multiple injuries, draw a line between the mechanism of injury and the site of injury. Then again at the bottom, he'll, there's another time block. He'll write the time of the vital signs were taken. He will also put the pulse rate and location. Write the casualty's pulse rate. On the O2 set, he'll write the casualties O2 set. In the AVCU marker, he'll write casualties level of consciousness. On the back of card, the evacuation site, he'll mark an X on the casualties evacuation as priority or precedence, whether that be urgent, priority, or routine. He will also mark an X for all circulation hemorrhage control interventions used for tourniquets, TQ, mark category, extremity, and then write the name of tourniquet used. For dressings, mark category, hemostatic, pressure, and or other, and write type of dressings used. Column B, he'll mark an X for all breathing interventions used and needle decompression. And D, he would label chest tube or chest seal and write the type of devices used. Block four, the first responder's name, print the first responder's name legibly, and then block five, first responder's last four. Once he's complete, he'll secure the DD form 1380 of the casualty per SOP unit. For us, it's going to be hung on the arm using retainer band. And that is the end of this line.